You'll meet the people I know And some that just come and go And yeah, your life's not your own If everybody knows what everybody knows So take a good look and you'll see That they ordinary people like you and me Feel free to come to the village with us Teddy, welcome to Village Reef. Thank you. We haven't seen you since you were a schoolboy, but I'm not going to say my how you've grown. <laughs> <laughs> not quite as tall as your father, are you? No, not quite. How are your mum and dad? Actually, I haven't seen them for some time. Oh? He's been in Corsica. For the past two months. Oh, how wonderful. I have a friend who's working on a novel, and he went there to write, and I went there to keep him company. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, the garden's an absolute picture at this time of year. You have a lovely home. Thank quite you. palatial. Well, not quite as palatial as your place in Northumberland. <laughs> I'm afraid our style of living is becoming something of an embarrassment to Wendy. Wendy? Our daughter. Just got back from Britain. She's been on a study tour. Yes, where the, some of the socialism has rubbed off on her, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, darling, has Wilson taken Teddy's luggage up to his room? He hasn't got very much. Oh? Just a little uh, knapsack. Oh. It's been a lovely year for roses. You'll see them in the morning. We've arranged a full program for you, Teddy. A trip down the mine, a gold pour. Uh, do you play golf? Oh, good heavens, no. Is that the pitted, those lights up there? Well, that's the, uh, the headgear. Yeah. I can see the wheels turning. They never stop day or night. And on Sundays, we have the mine dancing. Now, that's spectacular. That's uh, number six shaft, the one you'll be going down. The cage drops to over 3,000 feet. Really? Yes, I suppose we take it all for granted. We tend to forget that we have the richest and deepest gold mines in the world. And that there are thousands of men working down there in the bowels of the earth. That the stuff they mine is the cornerstone of the international monetary system. Come on, Dad, you're forgetting your lines. Wendy. Teddy, this is our daughter, Wendy. Wendy, this is Teddy. Hello. I thought you were Edward. Ted is short for Edward, darling. I can never understand people who go to the trouble of naming someone Edward if they're going to call him Ted. Teddy. 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 And do you know where he's just come from? Corsica. Been staying with a friend that's uh, writing a novel. We've never been to Corsica. I believe it's one of the few places left that hasn't been overrun by tourists. Yes. This friend of mine, his villa is up in the mountains. It's miles from everywhere. Oh, how lovely. And you? What do you do? Not very much, I'm afraid. I sort of dabble in poetry a bit. Well, that's interesting. Uh, that's Wendy's subject, doing a BA, honours in English. And writing a thesis on T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot? My favourite poet. Mine too. I know the whole of the wasteland off by heart. There now. You two have found something in common already. Uh, we spent some delightful weekends at your um, country estate in Northumberland, uh, Teddy. That's where we first met you. You were home from boarding school. Winchester, wasn't it? I loathed the place. Your father took Hilton grouse shooting. Uh, what have you got up there? Um, uh, 500 acres? About that, yes. Do you spend much time there? Not really. I've been living in London. Oh, of course you have. In Knightsbridge with your parents. Well, actually, Camden Town. Oh? This friend of mine, the one who's working on the novel, he worked for the council in Camden Town. Really? He was a plumber. How unusual. I realize it's too late to expect supper. We'll just have a cup of tea. Find everything you need in the kitchen. I know that, lass. But I've been slaving away all day down in Pitt, and I'm that bloody weary, I must walk on my bleeding knees. Now, that's a good go. Just a cup of tea. Now, make it snappy or I'll belt you one on the ear roll. You've got a nerve. How dare you walk in here as though you own the place and start giving orders? Gee, sir, I was only joking. Well, I'm not. I'm not some sort of glorified housekeeper with nothing better to do than fetch and carry for you all day. I wasn't being serious. Every but time you walk in here, you expect me to jump to attention. That's not true, Sel. 
Look, if that's the way you feel, I can, I can always move into single quarters. Two's company, three's a crowd, I should have realised. Sorry, Nick. I didn't mean to show that. What's the problem, Sal? Look, I know about the problem, about the baby. Rocky told me. I'm sorry. It seems to be preying on his mind, and that's the worst thing that can happen. This way we'll never have a baby. Look, it'll come right. It's getting worse. This afternoon he phoned to say he wouldn't be home for supper. It's some important job underground, something urgent. What's wrong with that? Well, suddenly he's so cold and distant. He's never spoken to me like that before. So briskly. I was frightened. Well, maybe he feels a bit, you know, inferior. I can understand that. I know the feeling. But there's no reason for him to turn his back on me. Look, if you, if you think it'll help, I, well, I don't mind moving out, really. I don't, as I said. It's not you he's got it in for. It's Quintus. Ah, uh, Dr. Roxburgh, I presume. Oh, don't look so worried. You're not the only ambitious mining man who wants to get to the top by sticking in a little bit of overtime. This is the long wall strain gauge readings. I'll have my full report tomorrow. Briefly, you're going to need a lot of additional support in there. More timber? Oh, it already looks like the Nisner forest along that dike. Those readings confirm the stress level predictions we got from the computer. Frankly, I'm glad I'm not a stoker in there. Muni worry, there'll be plenty of support. We'll use hydraulic props as well as timber. I wouldn't waste any time if I were you. I'm a fast worker, you know that, underground as well as on top. Hey, by the way, what about that dinner I promised the Roxboroughs? Sally says you're free on Saturday, but I must clear it with you first. Saturday's out. So I said, well, too bad. If Rocky can't make it, the two of us will go on our own. I said Saturday's out for both of us. Oh, well, always make it another night. It's one advantage of not having kids. You can go out any time you feel like it. You know, I've come to the conclusion I've got to take advantage of my newfound freedom. I mean, what's the point of being a bachelor again if you don't make the most of it, eh? And it's not as if there's a shortage of birds around. Ha! Huh, you'd be surprised. If you, uh, hurry up with your shower, we can crack a beer before Cheezer goes out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give you a clue. I know. Here we go round the prickly pear, the prickly pear. Oh. The hollow man. You've got it. Here we go round the prickly pear. Prickly pear, prickly pear. Here we go round the prickly pear at five o'clock in the morning. Uh. You know, if you think about it, it's a sort of wasteland revisited, isn't it? This is dead land. This is cactus land. You can recognize the same craggy elemental images. Rock, sand, dust. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. Terrifying. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. This is the way the world ends. Not, Not with, with a, bang. a bang, but a whimper. Mm. He's put old Nick's nose right out of joint, that's for sure. That's why he and Wendy have broken up, because she's got her eye on this Harvey Walker bloke. I'll bet you any money you like. So that's why Nick's got such a long face these days. I don't believe he came here to visit the mine. Who'd come all the way from England to see Village Reef? He's come out here to find a wife. And if Mrs. mccrae has got anything to do with it, he'll find one. Is he a sir, too? Ach, man, they're all sirs and ladies, you know, aristocracy. Yo. Ah, oh, what chance has Nick got against that lot? Once a night, always a night. But twice a Jesus. night. Cheezer! <laughs> <laughs> yes, some girls have all the luck, eh? <laughs> so Edward Harvey Walker, and who did I get? Ted Dixon. Oh, Edward Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, man, plain old Ted. Ah, oh, don't worry, my sunshine. We can't all be VIPs. Eh? You should complain. Typical woman. <laughs> Never satisfied. You give them back in your palace, they want the Taj Mahal. Thank you. 
What do you have in the line of fruit drops, please? Fruit drops. Um, I wonder what he looks like. Who? So what's your name? Well, if he looks like his mother, he looks like Mickey Rooney. Mm -hmm. If he looks like his father, he looks like Moira Lister. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you look like David Niven. Uh, a real high-class English gentleman. I think I'll take two of these. At 22 cents. Like Stuart Granger. Yes, he was only lecker, hey? So distinguished. Vivian Lee. Now, there was an actress. Who is she? Gone with the wind. Ah. Oh. I mean, what do you mean? Thank you. Ah, oh, don't worry, my lamb chop. We can't all be film stars. That one could do with a bath, eh? Who's that? An immigrant. From England? Man, they come from everywhere. Englishmen, Italians, Portuguese. You can tell them a mile off. That was a silty, that one. He won't last long. You've got to be tough to be underground, eh, Ted? Geez, I want you to watch the shop for a bit, eh? I'm just going to take these curlers out of my hair. You won't see any improvement. <laughs> What's the occasion, Connie? That Harvey Walker bloke, they're showing him all over the mine. You think they might bring him in here? Well, you never can tell. Yes, imagine that, hey? <clears throat> Perhaps uh, I'd better put on a tie. Hey, that bloke that was in here just now, did any of you hear him speak? Uh-uh. He had a very lordy da accent for an immigrant. No. Right, this is the shaft we'll be going down. We'll drop 1,500 meters, then transfer to the sub-vertical. We'll then go down another 1,000 meters to 34 level. A fruit drop. Thank you. We'll then follow this footwall drive to this section over here where we're extracting a high-grade remnant. It's beautiful, isn't it? Like an abstract. Imagine, say, this portion, in a frame. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> you have to try and uh, visualize it, you see, in three dimensions. You see, the reef horizon dips from north to south at an angle of roughly 35 degrees. Ah, yes. You know, I find it also fascinating, particularly the machinery. It's so sort of sculptural. I suppose that's what they mean by poetry in motion. <laughs> no, really, it's not poetry moving. It's the poetry of motion well shall we get moving right <laughs> wendy have you just got up hmm. what about your lectures it's nearly lunch time oh there was nothing important teddy not up yet He's been up for hours. Well, where's he got to? Down the mine. Oh, of course, I forgot. Part of the program. That's right. On Saturday afternoon, he was supposed to be playing golf. On Sunday, cricket. Needless to say, both arrangements have been hastily cancelled. This evening, he's attending an official cocktail party at the manager's residence to meet the VIPs of Village Reef. How are you going to avert that disaster? Oh, that's all right. I've told everyone it's going to be very informal. Oh, well, I bet you've also told them about Teddy. What? And spoil the fun? I can't wait to see their faces. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they'll know what to expect. By this evening, the whole of Village Reef will have heard about Teddy Harvey Walker. Darling, your father was wondering if Teddy would be offended if he offered him a suit. And, and, no, I said, well, can you imagine Teddy in a suit? <laughs> um, it would be far too big for him anyway. But I did want perhaps Nick might... Um... Oh, Mum, what does it matter what he wears? Well, I was thinking in terms simply of a clean shirt. <laughs> Darling, you know it makes no difference to me what Teddy wears. But you know what your dad's like. Well, why don't you make it a fancy dress? Have a hippie party. <laughs> then they won't know the difference. <laughs> oh. I noticed uh, you and he were hitting it off rather well at three o'clock this morning. You know, he was reading me some of his verse. It's actually rather good. Darling, hello. You know I have an appointment at 2.15. I hadn't forgotten. Lunch is almost <clears throat> ready. Good. Well... What time did the party finally break oh, up? 
no idea. Time was immaterial. Teddy was up for breakfast, which rather surprised me. I wonder how he's enjoying his trip underground. He was rather excited about it. You know, he really does know the whole of the wasteland off by heart. <laughs> I get the impression that you and he are... Um... Are uh, hitting it off? Well... Uh... Well, that's what you were wanting, wasn't it? Uh, not really. I... Ah, but that was when you were expecting someone slightly different. Well, he's a pleasant fellow. A little strange, perhaps, by our standards, but very pleasant. I wonder what his poetry is like. Oh, I don't think you'd understand it. <laughs> <laughs> you know we're having a little do for him tonight. Yeah, 5.30, come as you are. Your mother was wondering if he wouldn't like to borrow a pair of slacks and a jacket. I was wondering if Nick might... Uh... Um, well, Nick and I have broken off diplomatic relations. Oh. Of course, I couldn't care less what the fellow wears. But you know what your mother's like. She likes to keep up appearances. Lunch is ready, dear. Well, I am always ready to compromise. We were going to have lounge suits, and then we decided to keep it casual. Big deal. And then it takes two sides to compromise. I was wondering if Teddy might be persuaded to do his bit as well. What? Wash his socks? At least wear them. Hello? <coughs> yeah? Do you serve wine? Why? You drive white. Uh, preferably. Where are you from? UK? Thought so. So deep. <laughs> are you advertising razor blades? <laughs> we only have it by the bottle for special occasions. Well, that'll be all right. A bottle? Thank you. <coughs> How's it, Grandpa? <laughs> you an happy? Now, how could he be an happy man? Okay, his age. <laughs> <coughs> Are you an apprentice? Uh, not exactly, no. Not exactly, no. Oh, I say. I say. Not exactly, no. 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 Oh. Interesting. Satisfied? It's not chilled. We only chill it for special occasions. Ah, well, c'est la vie. <laughs> eh? Uh, too bad. Well, Quintus took him underground today and then he went off to have a word with somebody about something and left uh, Teddy at the substation. <laughs> well, I came along and I saw this, this long-haired fellow leaning against one of the benches. <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh, he was a student miner. Well, I know the new breed of mining recruits aren't what they used to be, but this was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> So I walked up to him. I was just, a, just about to blast him all the way down the haulage. Can you imagine the son of the London chairman? <laughs> anyway, somebody up there likes me. Just then, Quintus arrived. Ah, Basil, let me introduce you. It was a close shave, I can tell you. <laughs> Quintus, tell them what happened at the change house after you came up. What, in front of the ladies? Oh, come on, oh, come on, oh, shock on. us. <laughs> come on. Well, at least he uh, seems to be enjoying himself. That's the main thing. Diana, you did remind him about tonight, did you? Well, of course I did. It just seems that punctuality isn't one of his strong points. It's what you might call poetic license. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I do hope it wasn't something I said. No, 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 no. Wendy's just going through a, a phase. It's only temporary, I'm sure. You know, we met Teddy when he was still a schoolboy. Naturally, we thought he'd go follow his father into business or go into a profession. Hey, 
Who is that Oak? Who is that John? Ah, just some sooty. Do you know what he told us? He said that he's been living with a friend of his in a council house in Camden Town. And you'll never believe this, but this friend of his is a... Hello. Sorry I'm late. Ah, Teddy, we were worried about you. I hope you don't mind. I left my shoes on the veranda. They're all covered in goo. It must have been up on one of the slime stamps. Yes, it was all sort of <coughs> wet and grey. You should be careful up there. That stuff's like quicksand. Exactly what I thought. Thank you. You know, I couldn't help thinking what a marvellous place to dispose of a body. Assuming one had a body one wanted to dispose of. <laughs> I'm not the first person to think of that, I'm sure. We had a worker drowned up there a couple of years ago, so be careful. What a dreadful way to die. Suck slowly down into all that gunge. Ugh. A marvellous death scene for a film, though. Imagine, just a hand sticking out. You must tell us about Corsica. slowly moving. I beg your pardon? Uh, Teddy has a friend who's writing a novel in Corsica. Uh, yes. Uh, do you remember the third man? Yeah. Harry Lime's fingers protruding through the grating after being shot in the sewers by Joseph Cotton. Oh. That was a superb scene. That's His it. friend has a villa in the hills. I found the sand dumps utterly fascinating. All those weird shapes and formations. Wind erosion. It was just like Arizona, I suppose. At any moment, I expected a posse to come galloping down the gulch. <laughs> All it needed was a cactus or two to complete the picture. Come on, Teddy. Wendy. <laughs> You're not going to stay here and be insulted by these pompous twits. Wendy! They've been chortling and sniggering up their sleeves all evening. Come on, I know somewhere much more hospitable. Wendy, he's our guest. Only because he's the son of the London chairman. If it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have anything to do with him. Now, Come on, Teddy. Teddy. Don't you I'd like you to know like that he once nearly killed a policeman in Trafalgar Square who was assaulting a demonstrator. And if you don't believe me, well, perhaps you'd like to know he worked for, for six months as a bricklayer's navvy carrying bricks, and to do that, you've got to be tough. But you wouldn't know anything about that, would you? You wouldn't even know how to push a wheelbarrow, and you laugh at him! Come on, Teddy. Wendy! Uh, do you mind if we go that way? My shoes. Teddy! The village reaped their home, built on a pile of gold. 